win, lose, or draw in this election, will you commit here today for a peaceful transferal of power after the election? And there has been rioting in Louisville. There's been rioting in many cities across this country, red and your so-called red and blue states. Will you commit to making sure that there is a peaceful transferal of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. I and, understand that, but and, people are rioting. Do you commit uh, to making know, sure that there's a no, peaceful wanna, transferal of power? We want to have get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very trans. We'll have a very peaceful. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. Uh, the ballots are out of control. You know it. And you know who knows it better than anybody else? The Democrats know it better than anybody else. Go ahead. Mr. President, the second question is, will you Please go ahead. Why won't go ahead. You that any Republicans, all of whom are completely silent in the face of this remark, ever called themselves constitutionalists when their leader refuses to commit to the cornerstone of our democracy, the peaceful transfer of power, is an absolute joke. Trump literally said the phrase, get rid of the ballots and you'll have a very peaceful, there won't be a transfer, frankly, there will be a continuation. Meaning that he doesn't want ballots to be counted, presumably mail-in ballots, and that in the event that they aren't counted, that he'll win. He's saying outright that he does not think votes should be counted in this election. This is the President of the United States demanding that Americans' ballots not be counted because counting those ballots would mean that he'd lose. Again, I should probably mention that Republicans are completely silent. And this all stems from the fact that more Democrats are inclined to vote by mail given the dangers of the pandemic. But Trump has been grooming his supporters for months that the pandemic isn't a real thing and that they should vote in person just like they should attend his rallies in person and go to school in person. Sure, people are dying by the thousands, but Trump doesn't seem to be all that bothered by that. But because Democrats have acknowledged the severity of the virus and have embraced vote by mail, Trump has had his sights completely set on the Sabbath of mail-in ballots. We saw that with the appointment of Louis DeJoy as Postmaster General, who wasted no time grinding mail service to a halt as backlogs of mail and increased delays left open the very real possibility that ballots wouldn't arrive in time to be counted. We saw that with Republican lawsuits against mail ballots in states across the country. We saw that with his statement that he needs to move quickly on a new Supreme Court justice so that if they need to litigate on mail-in ballots, which he clearly has every intention of doing, that the court is skewed in his favor. But in terms of time, we go to January 20th. But I think it's better if you go before the election, because I think this this scam that the Democrats are pulling, it's a scam. This scam will be before the United States Supreme Court. And I think having a 4-4 situation is not a good situation. If you get that, I don't know that you'd get that. I think it should be 8 nothing or 9 nothing. But just in case it would be uh, more political than it should be, I think it's very important to have a uh, ninth justice. And now we're seeing that with just an outright refusal to even accept the results of the election if the results of those mail ballots being counted are favorable to Joe Biden. Trump is not interested in winning an election, he's intent on stealing it. And the reason he has to do that is because he's losing and he knows that. When you're winning, you don't have to cheat. You don't have to enact roadblocks to vote. You don't have to sow doubt and confusion. You don't have to instill fear into the nation. You don't have to do this if you're confident. You do it because you're desperate. And the fault doesn't just lie with Trump, although he certainly is at fault. It's also his party who hides behind the Constitution when it serves their cliches and platitudes, but when it's time to actually defend it, suddenly it's crickets. This is a party who cannot manage to find their tongues when the president says outright that he's not willing to leave office if he loses. I know this game is old by now, but just imagine what they would say if Obama went on TV and said the same thing. Imagine how quickly Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham would show up on the Senate floor to denounce him. Imagine how quickly Sean Hannity and Judge Jeanine would call him a dictator. The entire right would be calling for his impeachment faster than you can say Hillary's emails. So I would just say this. Don't give him the satisfaction of scaring you. Don't validate his strategy. Our job is not to panic, it's to vote. It's to vote in such large numbers that it won't be up for debate. It's to show up and repudiate not only Trump, but Trumpism. To reject everything that he and his party of enablers represents. With this election, we're on the precipice of an outright descent into authoritarianism or a return to democracy. It will take every single American showing up and voting early and correctly to ensure that we make the right choice on November 3rd. 
While you're here, please subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I take a deeper dive into the week's biggest stories and interview major players in the world of politics, like Kamala Harris, Adam Schiff, Katie Porter, Nancy Pelosi, Cory Booker, Eric Swalwell, and many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.